This is the last of my three videos on things that people worry might go wrong because of high energy physics experiments. In the other two, I looked at strangelets and microscopic black holes. This time it's something called a vacuum metastability event. One of the big ideas that emerges from quantum field theory, the underlying paperwork of particle physics, is that the universe and everything in it isn't in the most settled state it could be. In other words, what might seem to be a region of completely empty space in our universe, or a perfect vacuum devoid of even a single particle or speck of energy, is in reality a false vacuum. A false vacuum gives the illusion of emptiness and isn't necessarily a permanent state of affairs. Physicists use the word metastable to describe something that looks stable but has the ability to flip to a more stable state. So vacuum metastability event means a disturbance that causes a false vacuum, a metastable system, to flip into a lower true vacuum state. It's as if we lived in a valley hemmed in by tall mountains and thought that our valley was the lowest there was, but in fact over the mountains hidden from view is a lower one. Where the analogy breaks down is that being in a higher valley on earth isn't dangerous, but being in a universe that's in a higher than zero energy state is a bit precarious. If ever the barrier separating the false vacuum from the true vacuum were to be breached, then our entire cosmos and all of its contents, including the Sun, Earth and ourselves, would wink out of existence, and it would be replaced by an alien reality with its own set of physical laws and conditions that would almost certainly preclude any kind of life. One way this end of the universe scenario could kick in is naturally due to some event somewhere, somehow across the vastness of space, that creates a shortcut or passageway between the local minimum of the false vacuum and the absolute lowest possible minimum of the true vacuum. This effect, known as quantum tunneling, happens when a particle, instead of going over an otherwise insurmountable energy barrier, tunnels its way through. Quantum tunneling is seen in radioactive decay, and is exploited as an essential mechanism in devices such as the scanning tunneling microscope. In the case of the false vacuum, the effect would spread out from its source at the speed of light and eventually reach our planetary system and erase us in the blink of an eye from the scheme of things. Another way it could happen is by an artificial zap that focused enough energy in one tiny place so as to penetrate the barrier separating us from the true vacuum. The Large Hadron Collider, it's been suggested, or some even more powerful successor might supply the spark to tip life, the universe and everything into this ultimate oblivion. Of course, it's not really going to happen. Every day, from every direction, cosmic rays arrive at our planet from deep space. Cosmic rays consist of very fast-moving charged particles, mostly protons, but also including some helium nuclei and electrons. Some of them come from the Sun, others from the rest of our galaxy, and others still from extragalactic sources. Their energies span a wide range and can be prodigious, so much so that in slamming into more or less stationary nuclei in our atmosphere, the collisions can be at least a million times more violent than any head-on meeting of protons in the LHC. If it were possible for the European particle smasher to spawn micro-black holes, strangelets, or vacuum metastability events, then all these things should have been produced time and time again through cosmic ray collisions over the course of our planet's history. Yet here we are still. It's true that our giant particle accelerators have the advantage from a physicist's point of view that they can generate lots of collisions in a short space of time and can do so in a controlled, predictable way. But any calamities threatening the world and its inhabitants by superfast subatomic impacts ought to have manifested themselves long before humans appeared on the scene.